Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another week of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Trikan Sukumar, Systems and Control IIT. So, we are embarking into the final week of our course on nonlinear and adaptive control. Um, I do really hope that you have learned um, quite a bit during this course on how to design and analyze robust adaptive control algorithms that can drive systems uh, such as the drone, the aircraft, the spacecraft, the neural network that you see here in the background. As I have mentioned before, I'm always very, very open to uh, hearing more about the sort of applications that you folks are working on or plan to work on. Uh, plan to work on using the tools and techniques that you've learned here and i'm hoping to hear more about that from all of you so uh, what we were doing until last time was uh, to look at a particular uh, kind of adaptive control design which does not rely on persistent excitation anymore and uh, only relies on having excitation for a finite amount of time and this condition was of course called the initial excitation condition and we of course uh, saw how to do control design we saw how it was a weaker requirement as opposed to your uh, you know persistence excitation based design and um, we uh, saw both the advantages and limitations of this method. Uh, we also saw that uh, it's possible to alleviate some of the limitations by slightly modifying the initial excitation design to add a certainty equivalence adaptive control term. Right? So, uh, keeping that in mind, um, we uh, do hope that you know this sort of design method helps us to uh, you know, give some improvements, uh, not just in theory. Of course, we've seen uh, in theory that uh, there are significant improvements, especially in, in the sense that you have these uh, negative terms in your adaptive update law, which was of course not there you know, earlier, right? So uh, we do of course hope that this sort of improvement is also something that you see in the uh, performance of the adaptive control, right? Uh, so specifically the numerical performance of this adaptive control, all right? So um, again, um, uh, please try it out on actual systems and uh, please do report back, uh, you know, how it looks, you know, how the performance look compared with your traditional uh, certainty equivalence controller, yeah, and we would like to hear more from you. Now, where we want to go starting today is on discussing, um, you know, sort of uh, modern ideas, yeah, in adaptive control. Uh, and this, uh, the aim is here to make some connections with learning theory which has become very, very popular. And of course, adaptive control is also uh, consisting of learning itself. So this is another you know, case in point that we will try to make that parameter learning is essentially um, you know, an ingredient or a key ingredient of uh, what you do in uh, you know, deep learning, right? Albeit the algorithm, algorithms that are used uh, may differ and uh, but but eventually the basic theory remains the same so the so the key connection that we will try to make is with uh, neural networks and so deep learning so multi-layer neural networks which is essentially what deep learning involves but before we do any of that i want to point you and and also talk a little bit about this particular paper as we can see this is a very very recent uh, article that uh, that's come up in archive um, 
online and of course i'll put this uh, up in the course material also uh, this is by Anuradha Andaswamy and Alexander Fratkov. These are, you know, rather senior researchers in the field of uh, adaptive control and learning. Um, so what I want to do is to sort of um, go over uh, this paper, uh, you know, sort of give an overview of this paper uh, in this uh, session and sort of uh, get a feel for uh, how adaptive control has evolved you know what pieces of adaptive control we have sort of covered in this course and of course uh, what is left and what we've left out of course uh, due to again uh, lack of time in any course such as this um, and we also want to see what kind of connections with learning uh, has been made in literature so this is a what we call a you know survey paper so I'm going to mark it here as lecture 12.1 so our last week of lectures so uh, like i said this is a survey paper so we are not really going to do a lot of mathematics or discuss a lot of mathematics like we have been doing but we look at how things have evolved all right so um so of course um you know uh, these are some of the highlights of course of this article um so there have been advances in the last 70 years in 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 both uh in adaptive control in both uh, you know deterministic uh, and deterministic continuous time systems right? and also stochastic discrete time systems okay so uh, these are the two sort of uh, dynamical systems that have been looked at extensively in the um, domain of adaptive control, right? Um, as you can see, we uh, we have covered, of course, only deterministic and continuous time systems, which is why I'm going to mark it in a different color here. Uh, but but of course, there exists a lot of literature and work on stochastic discrete systems in adaptive control also. Um, so, um. So this article, of course, is sort of trying to connect adaptive control to learning. So it is it sort of um, looks at the developments that have significant intersection with parameter learning, and and of course, I mean, uh, as they usually do in survey articles, there's a lot of references that you can go through, uh, and as part of different sections, and if if you want to delve into a particular topic in much more detail and so you will you will of course get um, a very good very good idea of how uh, you want to proceed to learn a particular topic if if you're interested in that from here yeah. um, so so anyway so uh, so we are we start with this article starts with some kind of a chronology right um, on, on how adaptive control went so in from 50s to 65 uh, you know, you, you had a lot of work on deterministic continuous time systems, right? And this is the sort of, uh, you know, work that we also uh, discussed, right? So uh, there was a development of what is called the MIT rule, which formed the core of adaptive control. Um, and, and this essentially was a way of updating unknown parameters by a very standard gradient type formula. And what is that? Uh, gradient type formula it is this equation one that you see here right. so um now here uh the e is of course the tracking error that we are so used to seeing right um between this process output y and the desired output y ym and the gra gradient is of course the gradient operator and the gradient is taken with respect to the uh unknown parameter theta right so um, so basically the idea is uh, you know sort of a way of um, you know a sort of a steepest descent kind of an idea that you have typically in optimization type algorithms so this is essentially what was called the mit rule and this formed the basis of a lot of adaptive control algorithms um, so, um, 
So basically, a lot of uh, motivation for adaptive control came from applications in aerospace uh, for automotive, uh, for autopilot design and flight control. And this uh, still continues to be the case. A lot of uh, more recent work uh, in adaptive control has been applied to uh, autopilots in uh, fighter planes. And uh, these have been tested, uh, have been field tested uh, successfully, in fact. Um, of course, um, getting uh, you know FAA clearances and security clearances, etc., is a different matter altogether. But they have undergone you know, significant field performance. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so so basically, uh, you know, so this is sort of what this section of this article talks about. So. Uh, so rather, rather, rather interesting, interesting uh, set of uh, topics on which uh, there was a requirement to do adaptation of parameters and adaptation of unknown quantities. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so so this is a sort of motivation for uh, you know, what, why, or how adaptive control for continuous time systems did come about. Uh, there's also the a discussion on this uh, problem of uh, pattern recognition and classification and this was seen as a parallel development yeah in adapt to adaptation right and um, uh, interestingly they and, and a lot of I mean, of course there were very very different kinds of researchers who were working on these topics like vidro who is very very famous um but then there were also uh, Folks from adaptive control and nonlinear control, like uh, Yakubovich, uh, who also uh, were working on it, Fratko, Polyak, yeah, and uh, more recent works, right? So, uh, so basically, um, uh, the idea is that um, there was a common element in uh, to a diverse set of problems in pattern recognition and signal processing, which is the determination of this, of a set of parameters or waves. That leads to desired classification, right? So eventually, there was also the notion of trying to identify parameters or weights, and and using basically just input output data, right? There was no clear models per se, uh, or or the models were incomplete to a large extent. But the idea was to sort of um, identify parameters that would help describe the model, right? And Basically, Vidro's Adeline filters is one of the big, big uh, foundations for neural networks deep and otherwise. Yeah. So these Adeline filters became the foundations for what became neural networks. Yeah. So, so very, very old, very, very classical ones, right? Um, uh, so anyway, so very, very interesting. Now, um, it. it it was, of course, realized soon that this MIT rule proposed by Whitaker uh, can result in instability. And, um, of course, uh, then there was a requirement to study the stability of these adaptive controllers, right? I mean, it was not just enough to figure out a way to adapt for the practice, but, of course, to find a way to uh, formulate a stability framework for analysis and synthesis of adaptive systems. And this is where, uh, you know, there was a discussion or there was a lot of uh, delving into dynamics, dynamical system notions. Um, many, many authors, uh, I would, I would, again, uh, point you more towards Narendra and Kudwa, um, who are one of the seminal researchers in this area. Uh, and of course, uh, Lyapunov's method was suggested right, in view of the gradient descent approach. And, and this is what we learned right in this course. Most of what we did in adaptive control uh, in this course was via the use of the Lyapunov's method, right? And and you can see the origin for this is you know going as far as the 70s, right? So um, not just Narendra, of course, um, you know this this in in a deterministic discrete time setting, this was uh, being parallelly addressed by Yakubovich in Russia, right? So 68 and 72. So, so a lot of a lot of different works. I mean, there was work by Landau, yeah, Wittenmark, 
um, you know, amongst others. I mean, you will find these names in, uh, you know, very, very good books in adaptive control. Narendra and Annaswamy, Astrom and Wittenmark, Yanu and Sun. So Shastri and Watson, Tao, Christic. So uh, Fratkov, Kumar, Varaya. So who did the stochastic systems? So, so uh, these basically addressed uh, adaptive control architectures for a range of dynamic systems. All right. Uh, with of course full or partial measurements and so on and so forth. So this was essentially, you know, I think you can trace it to about, you know, I would say, I mean, there's of course much more recent 2003, but you can trace it from 1975 to 85, 90 and so on. Right? So almost 15 years of work, uh, you know, actually laid the foundation for stable adaptive control, right? So I would use the word, uh, you know, stable adaptive control came about. Yeah, until then it was more like uh, there was a update law for the parameters which was coming out of some kind of an optimization rule, but it did not really guarantee stability of the system, right? So, um, so anyway, so this is, uh, so we are, I mean, we are already aware of this kind of a structure for adjusting the parameter. This is what came out of, uh, you know, most of the adaptive control laws. Uh, and in fact, we've also looked at update laws, which look pretty much like this equation to here. Uh, then, of course, there was this, uh, if I is the suitably shown regressor, and, and you know, you have case with some kind of a normalization component or a weight, if you may, which we call the adaptive control gain. And then, of course, there was uh, the development of the notion of model reference adaptive control. Again, something we studied. Um, in the stochastic systems domain, uh, you know, based on the work by Astrom and co-workers, you, uh, we, the outcome of that was the development of what is called self-tuning regulators. All right. And again, this has also been worked on by many other authors like Landau, Kumar, Clark, etc. All right. So. Um, of course, then there were connections. Um, in, in all these cases, there were a requirement for learning that is accurate parameter estimation. Just like in signal processing, the Adeline filters and neural networks, you had the requirement for learning parameters and weights. Here also, you are, we know we have parameters if we wanted to estimate, right? So we, in fact, saw that in our uh, in, in several of our lectures, right? So uh, this sort of connection was also, uh, you know, made in stochastic approximation framework uh, by you know, Sipkin in his work. Right. So uh, so the idea is that there was, you know, there was this parallel and similar evolution uh, into branches of adaptive control in deterministic and stochastic systems. So of course they were distinct tools, but this development was happening sort of parallel. Yeah. Um, so of course this this adaptive control terminology remained in vogue in deterministic systems, but then in the stochastic systems framework, uh, it was termed as self-tuning regulators. We, of course, did not cover any stochastic system self-tuning regulators in this course, but I would, you know, sort of strongly encourage you to uh, look at that. Then, uh, of course, 90s to present, uh, you know, there were many, uh, lot of new novel flavors yeah, in adaptive control of deterministic and stochastic systems. Um, uh, so one of the things that was evident, uh, you know, was that uh, both the gradient algorithm and the stability-based algorithm in the Lyapunov approach had uh, robustness issues to perturbations such as bounded disturbance and unknown dynamics. And this was figured out in 80s itself, right? Uh, and so therefore, uh, there were several approaches that were developed in order to nullify this issue. This was due to Narendra. We saw we saw uh, the sigma modification, which was due to Ianu and Kokoto, which which was sorry, which was due to Narendra, um, and the epsilon modification, which was due to Ianu and Kokoto, which right. Um, so so basically, we uh, wanted to ensure that uh, these adaptive algorithms also provided robustness to withstand non-parametric uncertainties such as bounded external disturbances, right? So, um, so either of course they, I mean, there was this connection to 
uh, persistent excitation of exogenous signals, right? Um, or of course, we modify the adaptive control in a suitable manner, right? which is what is the sigma epsilon modification, right? So if you have persistent excitation, none of this was ever a problem. There was always nice convergence properties and all that. We saw this Narendra and Anaswamy's results and so on. Um, and uh, you know, if you did not have persistent excitation, we had to modify the adaptive law by sigma and epsilon modification. So this is what we learnt, and this is what was a sequence of development. Uh, so again, this there was again a parallel, uh, you know, in 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 the learning framework and the learning domain on regularization in machine learning, right? And then again, similar results in discrete time as well. So um so um so anyway so so this sort of highlights the parallels that you have in the uh, discrete continuous stochastic framework that's happening right um so of course then there was a large large uh, requirement uh, for addressing uh, parametric uncertainties that appeared in different um, sort of cases, different sort of situations. And a lot of special case nonlinear systems were started to be considered in the 90s, right? So uh, this was, you know, uh, started with Christic's work and then Slotin and Lee. And so a lot of focus on uh, nonlinear system because of course, most real systems are nonlinear. So just focusing on linear systems or linearizing systems was not always a solution. And these were based on methods such as feedback innovation, backstepping, and averaging. So we did, of course, look at the backstepping-based uh, results. Right? We did look at the backstepping-based results mostly due to Christic, and of course, some of them due to Slotin and B. Uh, but then there were many, many authors. There is Lavretsky, Kovakimian. There is Slotin. There is Anaswami, Narendra Parthasarathy. So basically, a lot of authors who did, uh, you know, contribute to this area. Right? So. Uh, by the end of you know 80s there was this um, you know, 80s and of course in 90s there was a focus on uh, you know, what is called uh, reinforcement learning or approximate dynamic programming so uh, and this sort of trend was highlighted by this paper in 92 by Sutton et al uh, which is basically reinforcement learning in direct adaptive control so uh, in, in, in usually the works on control based on reinforcement learning, typically a performance index is introduced, right? And um, then the neural network is used to um, approximate uh, either the predicted optimal value of this functional or the optimal control policy. So basically a neural network is a function approximator and we will see something later on. Um, and the idea is that um, in this performance index, which is like a cost, uh, which is usually an integral integral cost. Um, the idea is that uh, we, in reinforcement learning, is to use a function approximator to figure out the optimal value or the optimal policy that will give the optimal value. Right. So, so these, um, you know, there were many a lot of different terminology for these. And these are called either an approximate DP, a dynamic programming, or neurodynamic programming, or adaptive dynamic programming. So all of these, uh, you know, are are sort of terminologies that have been parallelly used. Yeah. Um, the thing to remember is that um, uh, it's very difficult uh, to give good analytical results in in this setup. Um, because of obviously the complications arising due to dynamic programming, yeah. So, a uh, different sort of, um, uh, as we are aware, I mean, we have seen there are many different kinds of problem statements, and I mean, this is the typical, you know, deterministic continuous time system where you want uh, y to track some kind of a desired y c. Uh, I mean, or you may have some kind of a cost to be minimized. We usually do the first. I mean, we've looked at y tracking some yc and then of course we have these unknown uh, parameters theta right here so this is the sort of framework we have uh, and and uh, we we've also looked at some kind of linearized versions of these you know with with some regressor parameter type structure okay. um, of course the goal is usually to you know send the error to zero over time right and then this is uh, what is the idea right 
uh, now and the question is that if this this can be ensured even when you know there are parametric uncertainties in theta and also non parametric uncertainties uh, and several non parametric uncertainties like modeling disturb modeling unmodeled dynamics disturbances etc right um, so learning is always an important aspect of adaptive control right because we are always trying to learn some parameter theta right? um, we of course uh, look at you know this the certainty equivalence principle which form the basis of most of what we discussed in adaptive control right so uh, so that's the idea. I mean, basically, use the certainty equivalence principle is what came about of this, and um, a standard solution of an adaptive controller looks something like this. I mean, you have a controller which depends on you know some estimates uh, of the parameters, some regressor and time possibly, and then there is an update law, the parameter which of course again depends on the could possibly depends on the estimate itself and the regressor. So. So this is sort of the structure of what you have. Uh, then you, of course, have the linear version. It's the model reference adaptive control, where instead of following a, a reference uh, signal, uh, you, you follow a reference model. So that's, we also, this is also something that we have seen. One of the points that this article tries to make is that learning is essentially equal to parameter estimation. In adaptive control, very much so. Uh, in typical, um, you know, setting of uh, learning for control, also this is the case. More often than not, whether it be reinforcement learning or deep learning, you are trying to learn some parameters, right? So, and uh, and we did, uh, I mean, many researchers established when such learning can happen. And these are, you know, connected to the persistence of excitation condition and uniform observability condition. We did look at this extensively, right? In our, I mean, we we looked at the work here, and in fact, in fact, mostly the Morgan Narendra paper in seventy seven. So this is what we looked at. Uh, so this article is what we focused on mostly the results that you saw, but we also saw you know results, further results. Right? Um, then uh, there is there have been some results on the notion of multiple models in adaptive control also. Um, um, but anyway, that's an again another parallel sort of a framework is what I would say. Um, so, so yeah, so several several um, interesting results on when parameter learning can happen, and we did look at this. I mean, again, so these were results from seventies and eighties, and we did look at some of these. Yeah. Um, beyond that, there was a notion of uh, robustness in adaptive control also. Right. So, um, the idea being that if there are unmodeled dynamics, time varying parameters and disturbances, how does the plant look? So, in 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 the frequency domain, we would have something like this, where of course d is some kind of a disturbance, and then n is some kind of a noise, and theta is some kind of a time varying quantity, right? Uh, so, uh, no, again. Uh, most of these results, uh, these approaches on uh, relied on properties of persistent excitation of exogenous commands. This is again Anderson, Narendra, etc. Uh, or you modify the adaptive law. So these are again the results that uh, connect to, you know, I would, this is basically sigma epsilon modification. Yeah, this is what helped impart robustness right? and so of course these are summarized in this result right um there is also this uh, i mean i'm not going to discuss this in too much detail again here but there has also been a lot of development on stochastic and discrete time systems adaptive control in parallel and as i mentioned these are called these have been termed as self-tuning regulators um and and a lot of this work has been uh, due to Kumar and Varaya. A lot of different work connected to Varaya, Astrom, etc. So if you search these authors, you will usually find some results. And so there is also some little bit of a summary on uh, what the self-tuning regulators at a stochastic discrete time adaptive control results look like. So this is sort of what you have. Um, and the idea is that they 
the stochastic the self tuning regulatory addresses the design of a minimum variance control uh, which looks something like this um, and there is still the connection of parameter estimation and persistent excitation i mean that cannot of course be uh, sort of given up even in this case i mean the conditions for persistence may look different but uh, the requirement for persistent excitation still remains okay so um, and then finally there is also adaptive optimal control for lqg type of situations and this was also studied uh, where you have a discrete time system uh, with with unknown ab matrices and you want to do some kind of an lqg control that is you want to minimize a, a cost uh, which relies on uh, the the state x and also the control signal u and you want to figure out how to minimize this cost while knowing that a and b are unknown and in the presence of noise yeah so this is also uh, something that has been looked at so has been looked at and formulated here right so um so these are the sort of rather interesting sets of uh, or the interesting progress of how adaptive control has moved forward now what we want to do uh, in the subsequent session is to also look a little bit more at how this progress has happened so uh, i mean forgive me if you may uh, for introducing you to some history in adaptive control but what i did want you all to see is how the thought process of this innovation went yeah i mean there was a need based on autopilot aircraft flight systems then came about uh, some optimization based rules like the mit rule for parameter updation and then it was figured out that these were inadequate so then stability mechanisms were developed uh, and then stable adaptive controllers came about then there was a realization that there is uh, you know the stable adaptive controllers also do not guarantee robustness against disturbance and unmodeled dynamics so then there was the notion of sigma epsilon modifications persistent excitation for parameter learning etc and again in parallel to all of this there was the learning theory that was getting developed adeline filters uh and where also parameter identification was essential persistent excitation was formulated right and then there was of course the self tuning regulators in stochastic uh you know discrete time systems which did, we did not look at in our course but that is also a very very large set of literature that's out there in adaptive so i hope you got a good feel for how this adaptive control literature has evolved i'm going to look at a little bit more at this uh, article before we start into more discussion on on the learning aspects in adaptive control all right thank you and see you again soon